Hello everyone, this is Teacher Patrick once again. Welcome to P5 Circulatory System. I'm going to do um, some teaching today. Let's begin, okay? So later on, we will have two questions to answer. First question, what are the organs of the human circulatory system and what are their functions? So, two parts. First part, organs. Second part, function, okay? Second question, how do the different systems work together to carry out life processes? Basically, actually you learn that in P3. In P3, you learn under the book of system that there are a total of five systems, okay? These five systems must work together. If one of the systems is not functioning properly, the rest of the system will not work as well. Right now, okay? So let's talk about the heart first. This is the most important organ of the circulatory system. The noise in your chest is, is the sound your heart makes when it pumps blood. Your heart is pumping oxygen-rich blood all the time to all parts of your body. What does it mean? Now, previous topic, we learned about plant transport system. Remember, water carrying tube, food carrying tube. Water carrying tube carries water. Food carrying tube carries food. So, of course, when they say oxygen-rich blood, means blood that has lots of oxygen. Okay, so they are trying to tell us every part of the body is receiving oxygen-rich blood all the time. Now, always remember, it starts from the heart, from the heart, they pump oxygen-rich blood to all parts of the body. Now, they'll pump it to my hands, to my legs, to my brain, so that I can think of what to teach you right now, okay? So, a little trivial, you don't have to memorize this, just let me share a little bit with you. The heart lies near the middle of your chest, somewhere in the middle. Not exactly right in the middle, somewhere near. It's found between your lungs and is protected by ribcage. Now, in P3, when you learn about you know, skeletal system, remember the bones, the, um, the ribcage, the ribcage protects your heart. At the same time, it also protects your lungs, okay? So, it's conical in shape. Now, when you are much younger, you know, when you are told to draw a heart, then all of you start drawing the heart shape right now. Your heart doesn't look like this, okay? Your heart is conical in shape. What's the size? How does it look like? It's something like the size of a fist like that. But only for the adult, huh? for the children, they are still growing, so it may not be accurate. For the adult, if you clench your fist, it's about this size, okay, about. And it's tilted slightly towards the left side of your body. So don't need to go and memorize this by heart, don't. Next, by pumping and receiving blood to and from the lungs, the heart helps to carry blood rich in oxygen to the body cells. Now, what does it mean? The heart will actually pump carbon dioxide rich blood I say again the, the heart will actually pump, pump carbon dioxide rich blood to your lungs and then your lungs will receive the carbon dioxide and then they will push it out of your respiratory system but at the same time you're taking fresh air and this fresh air will fill up your lungs with lots of oxygen so when the blood is about to leave the lungs, they will carry the oxygen rich blood back to your heart again. Okay? At the same time, the carbon dioxide produced during respiration is also removed from the cells and returned to the lungs when it is released. So always remember, actually every part of the body will be using oxygen. So let's say my legs, I'm doing my running, and then my legs will need lots of oxygen for me to do my exercise right now. And then the carbon dioxide will be sent all the way back to my heart and then my heart will send it to my lungs my lungs will get rid of the carbon dioxide in your body and then after that they will take in oxygen from your lungs and they will go back to your heart again and the heart will pump oxygen rich blood once again to different parts of your body so let's talk about the heart muscle now our heart is made up of a piece of muscle okay so that's why it's called the heart muscle the heart muscle contracts and relaxes continuously. Take note about this word, contracts and relaxes. Contract, relax. Don't tell me contract and expand. Huh? Your heart can't expand. When you expand your heart, must have some heart issues. Huh? So it's contract, relax. Now, when they contract, what are they doing? They're actually pushing the blood out from your heart to all parts of your body to supply them with oxygen-rich blood. 
When it relaxes, the carbon dioxide rich blood starts to flow right back in to fill up your heart again. Okay, that's how it works. This allows your heart to pump blood non stop to all parts of your body. Unlike your heart muscles, your arm and leg muscles cannot contract and relax continuously as they get tired after working for some time. What are they trying to tell you is the difference between heart muscle and our leg muscles, there's one major difference. If your legs, leg muscles are tired, you can say, hey, let's take a break. I can't run anymore. Let's walk. But you can't tell your heart, hey, I think you have performed really well. I give you three days MC, okay? Take a break or take an off day. You can't do that because the moment it stops beating, goodbye. Okay, let's go on. So, the next organ that is important, take note, I use the word organ, it is actually blood vessel. Now, take note, blood is never an organ. So, during the exam, if they ask about what are the organs that form the circulation system, you can only say heart and blood vessel. If the question changed to name me the parts that form the circulation system. Then you can say heart, blood vessel, blood. Remember that, huh? don't forget. Reverse, rewind, replay this part. Remember this, okay? These tubes are called blood vessels. So coming towards the end, huh? your heart together with your blood vessel and the blood they contain form the parts of the system. There you go. Heart, blood vessels, blood form the parts. Okay, remember that, huh? parts of the system. The parts work together to carry out two important functions. First, they transport oxygen, digested food, and water to all parts of your body. Don't forget, it's always your blood will actually carry water, oxygen, digested food, okay? And then they will carry to all parts of your body, to your brain, to your hands, whichever that you need. Even talking needs energy, right? So of course, they will also send the digested food, oxygen and water to your mouth so that you can talk. Second, they carry carbon dioxide and waste materials away from different parts of the body. Now what does it mean? When your different parts of the body uses oxygen, of course then they will become carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will then be sent back towards the heart. Then, when your body, any part of the body uses um, digest the food, then it will become waste materials. This waste material will also be returned back, okay? And then of course, it will be you know, removed from the different parts of your body. The waste is then carried to the excretory organs where it is released from the body. This system is called a circulation system because it circulates or moves blood from your heart to all parts of your body and back to your heart again. Take note later on, I'm going to show you a chart. What does it mean by move blood from your heart to all parts of your body and back to your heart again. Later I'm going to show you this, okay? And we have come to an end for this one. Now, I'm going to change the angle of this camera to the white box. Give me a moment, okay? Okay, so I have created this chart before the lesson commences. So let me show you what it means. Huh? Okay, so this is lungs, your heart, and all parts of the body. Now, I want you to follow the color. Blue color represents carbon dioxide rich blood. As the name suggests, carbon dioxide rich blood means blood that has lots of carbon dioxide. Oxygen rich blood, as the name suggests, blood that has lots of oxygen. So what happens is, the heart will pump carbon dioxide rich blood back to the lungs. And then the lungs will remove the carbon dioxide. When the blood goes past the lungs, they will pick up oxygen. So the oxygen rich blood will then be pumped back to the heart. Then the heart will pump the oxygen rich blood to all parts of the body. Once different parts of the body uses the oxygen, then they will pump the carbon dioxide rich blood back to your heart again. And this cycle continues. I hope you have understood a very simple um, topic on circulation system. Okay, I'll see you for the next teaching slides. Goodbye.